welcome to our lecture video in fluid mechanics and in this video we will discuss total hydrostatic force on curved surfaces and we will solve the four sample problems presented in the handout so here in hydrostatic force on curved surfaces in this case curved surfaces are submerged in liquid at rest it, and it is more convenient to deal with the horizontal and vertical components of the total force acting on the surface. So we will he here solve for the horizontal and the vertical components. Note the discussion here is also applicable to plane surfaces. Okay, so here are the two components, the horizontal component. The horizontal component of the total hydrostatic force on any surface is equal to the pressure on the vertical projection of that surface. Okay, so we have here the formula force horizontal is equal to the pressure on center of gravity and the area that is being submerged. And then we have the vertical component. The vertical component of the total hydrostatic force on any surface is equal to the weight of either real or imaginary liquid above it. And the formula is F vertical is equal to the gamma of the liquid times the V or the volume. So gamma volume. And then for the total hydrostatic force, we have force is equal to the square root of the horizontal force squared plus the vertical force squared so we have here in this figure so we have here a uh, curve uh, gate being submerged in a fluid let's say uh, this is water so this is water surface now how do we get the horizontal and vertical component the horizontal component is the uh, the what the, the the area that you can see if you are looking at this side so the uh, the force here is acting horizontally so acting horizontally this is FH and what you can see here from this eyesight here is a shape of rectangular okay, a rectangular shape okay. so that is what is being projected here and you can find this the center of gravity here center of gravity of the rectangle and the center of pressure will be below the center of gravity so uh, this is what we will compute for force horizontal horizontal force the uh, the pressure exerted by the liquid and multiplied with the area that can be seen here and that area is rectangular now how about the vertical component it says there the weight of either real or imaginary liquid above it so the vertical component of the force here is yes this is fb the vertical force and that vertical force there now is equivalent to the weight of the liquid so here is the weight of the liquid so this volume here okay so you will compute for this volume so this uh, uh, area the area here multiplied with the weight or width I should say width and that would be if it's not mentioned in the problem we will use one meter width okay so in order to get the the weight of the volume here or the weight of the liquid here so that is the force vertical and for the total force it's it is the resultant of FH and FB so this is now your total force okay. we have two cases here to consider we have case one wherein the liquid is above the curved surface so this is the curved surface here this is our curved surface surface uh, let's say that is a curved gate and uh, the liquid here uh, let's say that is a water so this is the water surface 
So, if the case here is that the water or the liquid is above the curved surface, the vertical component of the hydrostatic force is downward and equal to the volume of the real liquid above the submerged surface. So, what is the uh, volume to be considered here? So, here is the volume to be considered. So, this is the end point. These are the end points of the curved surface. So, we will just project the end point here, upward. So, we will just project it upward. Therefore, this volume is what this structure is carrying. So, you will compute this volume of real liquid. And your force now here, your uh, uh, FB is that weight. So, FB. And how about the FH? What should be considered for FH? Our FH is projected at the other end so this is the other end of the structure so this is your uh, let's use other color for that so this becomes your projected horizontal oops this is what you can uh, see here So this is what we can see here. If it is not mentioned, let's put here one meter. Oops. It's not mentioned. Let's put here one meter width, and then this is the height. Okay, the height of the of this uh, gate, and then we have here the center of gravity, and then we have the center of pressure. Now the force each here will be on the center of pressure. So that's for case 1. How about case number 2? Case number 2 says that the liquid is below the curved surface. So this is the curved surface. And then this is the liquid. Say water surface. So the liquid is there. How do we compute now the... Or uh, how do we get the uh, vertical component? It says here, the vertical component of the hydrostatic force is going upward and equal to the volume of the imaginary liquid above the surface. So we will get the imaginary liquid above the surface. So taking note, this is, these are the endpoints of the curved surface. If we project it upward here at this endpoint, project that upward here. And then this is the surface of the liquid. So there, here is the intersection. This is now the imaginary liquid. And we will compute for the volume of this imaginary liquid. And this volume of imaginary liquid is equivalent to the force vertical. Now, how about the force uh, horizontal? So, again, you are to project the end and end of the curved surface. So, for the force horizontal, so this is what is being projected here for the force horizontal. Oops. So here is the center of gravity and center of pressure. So this is what uh, we can see here at this side. And then this is your force horizontal. So these are the two cases for uh, hydrostatic uh, total hydrostatic force on curved surfaces. Okay, so here we have imaginary liquid. Now let's solve for the uh, four sample problems.
represented in the handout. First one, we have a parabolic gate BC. So this gate here is not semi uh, quarter of a circle, but rather this is a parabolic gate. It is 5 meter perpendicular, so 5 meters perpendicular to the paper from the figure. Compute the horizontal and vertical component of the force acting on the gate and B, force B, required to prevent rotation about the hinge at C. So there is a hinge here. So there is a hinge at point C. Okay. So what case is this? This is case 1. Case 1 because this curved surface is dealing with real liquid so it's carrying real liquid. So here is our real liquid. There. Okay. Therefore, our um, force B is this. Force B. And then force each here. Nine meter at the nine meter and then six meters. Here. So compute for the horizontal and vertical component. Okay. So first, let's compute for the horizontal component. F of H is equal to the pressure exerted horizontally on the surface. So uh, what's our um, What's the figure here? So you're looking at a um, rectangular, rectangular. Shape. Yes. So you're looking at a rectangular uh, shape. So there, we're in the center of gravity. Is here center of gravity and then this is the center of pressure okay so we should uh, this force here is on the center of pressure right? so it's in the center of pressure okay so we have if each uh, formula here is gamma of the uh, water so it's water because it we are dealing with water surface here ws so water, then H at center of gravity, and then area that uh, we can see here. So the area that we can see at the side, okay. and this is the rectangular area. Now, this is now equal to gamma of water, 9.81. How about HC? What is the uh, H or height? From the surface, from the surface to the center of gravity, that is nine divided by two. Okay. Of course, the center of gravity for rectangle is half of its height, right? And then let's compute for the area. The area here is at five meter width. This is five meter width perpendicular to the paper and then height is 9 meters therefore the area is 5 times 9 so what's force horizontal it's now equal to 1986.525 kilonewton that's for the horizontal component now let's go to the vertical component fb fb is equal to gamma of the liquid which is the water and then the volume so gamma volume now what is the volume for parabola so volume of a parabola guys let's put it here Volume 
parabola is equal to 2 thirds of A times B. So, from FB, we now have 9.81. Then, the volume there is 2 thirds A, which is 6, and then B, 9. So, FB now is equal to... 1,765.8 kilo newton. Okay. So, next, the question here is the force at B required to prevent rotation about the hinge at C. Now, imagine this. If you have a force, so because of the presence of uh, water here, you have a force pushing this gate in this direction so it's it pushes or it push the gate from left to right so what force to prevent it to prevent the rotation so therefore it's looking for the force here so it's looking for this force f uh, let's name it uh, force at B. Okay, force at B, F B. Okay. So to compute for that force at B, we have here summation of moment at C, hinge, right? Uh, the uh, the gate is hinge at C. So, that is equal to zero, let's say positive counterclockwise. So, positive counterclockwise, we have their FB times 9 meters from 9 meters perpendicularly from C minus the FH, the FH, and then uh, where can you locate FH? That is y meters or y from the bottom, so y. The, uh, minus, we still have another one. Minus, we have fb, fb here, moving clockwise. So, since it's clockwise, negative, we have their fb. What's the distance here? So what is the uh, distance from here up to FB? So let's name that as bar X. So how do we determine that? Now if we have here a parabola, Have here a parabola okay, there you go so let's name this as um, x bar x and bar y now now for the centroid of the parabola so centroid center of gravity how do we determine which one is uh, 3? So, it's... If we name... If we, we have here the uh, 3 over 8B. So, this, this is the location of the center of the parabola. And then, 2 fifth A. Now, which one here is for the bar X? And which one is for the bar Y or Y bar? So bar X and then bar Y. Y bar. Okay. So which is the longer leg? B or A? Which one is the longer leg? Which one has a higher value? 3 8 or 2 5 so, 3 divided by 8, that is 0 0.75, at 0 0.375. 
0.375B. And then, what is 2 divided by 5? 0.4A. So, B is lesser than A. Therefore, we therefore conclude that our x bar our x bar here is the lesser one the lesser one here okay this is 3 8 over b uh 3 8 times b and then for y bar that is 2 fifth times a this is b and then this is a okay, so that's how we did it so that you will not be uh, confused whether we use a parabola that is uh resting uh, horizontally like that so if it's resting horizontally like that if this is our parabola therefore our y bar is 3 8 b and then x bar will be 2 fifth of a so that's how we use this formula here okay right so f v so let's continue this um, equation Oops. let's put it on the side it's just an extra discussion right center of gravity so this is the x bar and then the y bar and this is the y bar and then this is the x bar finish this one here therefore our fb our fb here here our fb this distance is x bar and what is our x bar our x bar is 3 8 of b so 3 8 of b which is 6 is equal to 0 so that is our formula How do we determine? So we have here the value for FH. We have the value of FB. We don't have yet the value for Y. So let's compute for the Y. So Y here. Y here. Is equal to. So let's put here Y. Is equal to 9 divided by 2. Minus the. So, this is center of gravity. Center of gravity minus the eccentricity E. So, the E is in between CG and CP. So, 9 over 2 minus E. And the question here is what is E? E for, is it parabola? Or eccentricity for, uh, are, we going, uh, are we going to use the... Uh, the moment of inertia of parabola or moment of inertia of uh, rectangular rectangle because the formula for E is IG over A H C okay, so which are we going to use we are going to use the the rectangular the rectangular uh, moment of inertia that is 5 base times height raised to 3 all over 12 all over the area which is 5 times 9 and then the hc the, the, the uh, distance from the water surface to the center of gravity that is 9 divided by 2 and that is equal to 1.5 so 1.5 therefore y now is equal to 9 over 2 minus 1.5 and that is equal to 3 meters 
or simply y is equal to 1 third of 9 that is equal to 3 meters okay, now finally we can now solve for fb so f b times 9 minus fh so what's our fh 1986.525 times y which is 3 meters minus uh, fv 1765.8 times the bar x which is 38 times 6 that is equal to 0 fb is now equal to 1103.625 kilonewton. So that's for example number one. Screenshot first. Let's go to the example number two. We have 8 meter diameter cylindrical tank weighing 500 kilonewton rests on the bottom of that tank which is 3 meters long. So this is the tank that it's talking about. This is the tank. And this is 3 meters long. It's not, uh, it, it's not this, ha. Huh? It's not this one here, 3 meters. No. The 3 meters long that is mentioned here is the distance perp perpendicular to the paper. So you can uh, visualize this as uh, resting. So So this is our uh, cylindrical um, tank. It's resting like that. Okay, and this is the three meters there. Okay. And water and oil. So it says there water and oil. 0.75 for the oil are poured or poured into the lift. A left. So, water here on the left and oil on the right portions of the tank to depths of 2 meters and 4 meters respectively. Find the magnitudes of the horizontal and vertical components of the hydrostatic forces acting on the gate. So, here's our, so there's a projection here. So, if you look uh, at here, so this is our eyesight, then another one here, if this is our eyesight, so what we are looking at here is, This is 3 meters and then this is 2 meters and this is 3 meters width and this is 4 meters. Okay. Now, uh, of course, we, we find the horizontal component of the water. So, for the water, FH. F H W is equal to gamma of water H center of gravity times the area that is equal to 9.81 and then for the H C that is 2 divided by 2 the area is 3 times 2 so F H water now is equal to 58.86 kilonewton okay. so this is one one already one magnitude of horizontal component then let's go to the 
oil. So, F H oil. So, gamma of oil, H C and then area. So, oil has a specific gravity of 0 0.75 times 9.81. H C is 4 divided by 2. And then the area is 3 by so FHO, FHO is now equal to 176.58 kilonewton. Okay, this is the second uh, component. Next, let's go to the uh, what water. FW of water. I F V of water. Mm. See, F V water is equal to gamma of water and then the volume. So, what case is this? What case is our sample number two? This is case number one. We are going to deal with imaginary liquid. So, what imaginary liquid? So, this one here. So, we will deal with imaginary liquid. So, from the bottom. Uh, so, the end of uh, projected uh, line for the water is here at the bottom of the tank. So, this is the... So, I think I should use the much dark. Okay. So, this is the imaginary volume for water so this is um, height 2 meters so this is 2 meter high and then this is uh, x we don't know yet what's the distance here so this is distance x How do we compute now the volume? So we know that gamma water is 9.81. But how about the volume? How do we compute that? So if you look intently, you will be seeing some regular shapes here. So if we project here from that to the center, so what can you see? There. Uh -huh. so we redraw it here so this is 2 meters this is x we have a, an angle here and obviously this is radius right so 8 meter diameter therefore the radius here is 4 meters so how do we compute now for the volume so area so of course area times the width so area here is equal to area of the sector what do you mean by sector? This one here is the sector. Okay. Area of the sector minus the area of the triangle. What triangle? This. So, what we're going to do is get the area of the sector minus the area of the triangle equals this. Okay, now let's find the area of a sector area of a sector is uh, is equal to pi r squared theta all over 360 now the question here is what is theta so we will compute for the theta first so theta is So 
So this is theta. This is 2 meters. This is 4 meters. And this is x. Therefore, cosine theta is equal to 2 fourth. Therefore, theta is equal to 60 degrees. And x here is equal to square root of 4 squared minus 2 squared. Therefore, x is equal to 2 square root of 3. Okay, so we can now compute for the area. Area now is equal to the area of the sector, which is pi. Radius is 4 meters squared. Theta is 60 all over 360. Minus the area of the triangle. So area of the triangle is equal to 1 half base. This is the base of the triangle X times the height 2 meters. So base times height which is 2. Now we know that X here is 2 square root of 3. So what's the area now? Here. Area. It's equal to 4.913 meters squared. Okay. So we can now solve for the force vertical for the water. Force vertical now for water is now equal to the uh, the gamma water times the volume so we now have here gamma of water 9.81 times the volume is the area times the width the width of the tank the length should I say the length of the tank and that is how long is the tank it's three meters so, 3 meter long times 3. Okay, so, force vertical for water. 9.81 times 4.913 times 3. It's 144.6 kilonewton. And then oil. How about oil? F. V for oil. Again, that is gamma of uh, oil times the volume. So, let's see that. Again, that is imaginary. Uh, so, this is the projected volume for oil. And this is the imaginary liquid. And it is quarter of a circle. The volume is quarter of a circle. So, how do we compute that? Oil is uh, 0 0.75 times 9.81 times the quarter of a circle. So let's just move this one here. Volume. Okay, volume. One fourth area of a uh, circle. One fourth area of a circle is pi r squared. So that is the, the area and then the length is 3 meters. Now you have now the volume. So Fb of oil now is 0 0.8. That is 277.37 kilonewton. Oops. Fbo. So that's example number two. There you go. So screenshot first. Number two. Let's go for example number three. The uh, six feet diameter cylinder weighs 5,000 pounds. So six feet diameter cylinder. So it has a diameter of 6 feet and it's 5 feet long so this is resting here and it is 5 feet long so there you go that's your cylinder and it is resting so 
this is uh, 5 feet long. Determine the upward force due to the effect of oil on the left side. And compute the horizontal reaction at B, uh, at A. And compute the vertical reaction at B. So, given the weight here, so given the weight of uh, 5,000 pounds, so this is the weight. So this is 5 5,000 pounds and oops, and we have here the the forces so compute the horizontal reaction at A so obviously if you if the uh, tank is being pushed to the right so there will come an an equal reaction so there will be a reaction here there will be a force here force at a and since we are dealing with a uh, tank here so there is a weight and then there is weight of what of uh, oil on the left side therefore the force at b is acting vertically upward there go. for letter a determine the upward force due to the effect of oil so as you can observe where is the end the uh, end point here for the oil here is the end point for the oil so oil and then it ended here Therefore, our imaginary, imaginary line is here. This is our imaginary line. So, when we're talking about um, vertical force exerted by the oil, that is equal to gamma of oil times the volume. Okay. So, we are dealing with the uh, volume so what is now the uh, we're, we are talking about the English English uh, metric so if we are dealing with uh, here so 6 feet that's in English what's the gamma of water in English that is 62.4 cubic feet per an um, so 62.4 pound sorry sorry it should be pound per cubic feet so that's for the gamma of water So the uh, the surface that we have here is this. So this is the curved surface. Therefore, since we are dealing with end to end here. So, what volume are we going to consider? So, end to end. This is the curved surface, end to end. So, our volume here is, is half of the tank. So, that's the volume that we are going to consider for this problem. Not, uh, not this one. No. So, we are dealing with here half of the tank right 
So we now have uh, FBO that is equal to gamma of uh, oil that is the specific gravity 0.8 times gamma of uh, water 62.4 and then the volume the volume is so one half of the area of the circle so one half of the area of the circle one half of pi r so the radius is 3 3 feet pi r squared and then the, the, the length so we have here the length 5 meters uh, 5 uh, feet long so that is times 5 so FBO now is equal to 3,528.64 pounds. That's for letter E. The letter B, compute for the horizontal reaction at E. Now, to compute for the horizontal reaction at E, we need to to see the the um, projected area here so uh, where is the projection here Okay. So the uh, height of this is six, six feet, and then this is five meter, a uh, five feet long. Therefore, our center of gravity is here, center of gravity, the center of pressure, so our HG thing here, H, uh, uh, HC is 3 meters. So FH, or F at A, or let's say FH, so FH is equal to FA. Is equal to gamma of oil HCA and that is equal to 0 0.8 times 62.4 times the HC HC is uh, 6 divided by uh, 2 6 divided by 2 and then the area the area is 5 by 6 therefore FA now is equal to 0.8 times 62.4 times 3 times 5.6 so 4492 point so that is 4492.8 pounds that's B the letter C, compute the vertical reaction at B. So we're looking for FB. So for C, so summation of forces vertical. So we're going to compute for the summation of forces vertical. Let's say positive upward. So we now have here FB. So FB plus the FBO, the oil, minus we are dealing with the weight, the weight of the tank. So it's included with summation of forces vertical. So weight is equal to zero. So FB plus the FBO, which is three five twenty eight six four minus the weight of five thousand. 
pounds is equal to zero. Therefore, FB now is equal to 1,471.36 pounds. So that's for example number three. Now, let's go to the last example. This is example number four. So, last example for this video. A 3-meter diameter open cylindrical tank. So, we have 3-meter diameter open cylindrical tank contains water and has a hemispherical bottom as shown. So, this is the hemispherical bottom. So, imagine the, um, imagine the scenario. So, we have the... Uh, we have your open cylindrical tank and it has a hemispherical bottom so so this is the bottom and then there is a hemispherical here determine the magnitude and line of action and the direction of the force of the water water on the curved bottom so this is the curved bottom so how do we compute that by the way, from the looks of it, you can already see the direction of the force of water. So, for the direction of the force of water, obviously, this is vertically downward. So, this is now the direction of the force of the water. It's not just the vertical force, but this is already the total force of the water on the bottom. So, it is FW. Okay, so how do we compute for the FW now? Force of water is actually the vertical force, FB, and that is gamma water volume. So this is 9.81, and then what is the volume here? The volume of the cylinder minus the volume of hemispherical bottom. So the volume is volume of uh, cylinder minus volume of hemisphere mm, that is equal to 9.81 so volume of the cylinder is pi r squared times the height minus the volume of the hemisphere is one half of the volume of the hemisphere so that is four thirds quartered pi r cube so, so that is equal to 485.4 kilonewton and of course the direction is downward okay, so that's example number Okay, so uh, that's that's all for this video.